Welcome everybody to the Entrepreneurial Collective Podcast, where we tell it like it is, and it is like we tell it. As always, I'm your host, Alan Dickey, and uh, I'm excited about this week's episode. Do you know what the title is? The title is, There Is No Perfect Time. Let me say that again, folks. There is no perfect time. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about for anything. There's no such thing as a perfect time. I, uh, I recently completed a business trip. I was out in uh, Western Canada, an amazing trip out to Calgary. And uh, wow, what an awesome time I had out there. What a successful trip I had out there. And uh, there was some experiences that I had with some amazing individuals out there, some conversations that, you know, uh, were had that uh, really made me think to myself, there's value on this subject matter. There's value for this, uh, you know, wisdom that I've learned in my life and want to share with all of you. And that is the fact that there is no perfect time. You know, whether you're in your uh, sales career, right? Where you are that business within the business, whether you are uh, amidst your entrepreneurial journey, right? Serving the world through your business. There's going to be many different uh, phases, steps, times where you're going to be waiting for this perfect time to make a move, right? To bring out that new product, service, thought, idea, or concept, to start that new brand, you know, and become that business within the business, that time to start your company. And uh, the fact of the matter is, there is no perfect time. So, what I want to share with you is a conversation I was able to have with an amazing uh, young man uh, that I met out on my trip. And, uh, well, you know exactly who you are. You want to know something, we had a conversation and our conversation just was about a bigger picture in life, right? We're sitting there in a sales organization talking about how to improve our sales, our process, our production levels for the uh, uh, that very company. And yet amidst this conversation, some ideas of the future, goals, visions, things this individual wanted to bring about in their life, uh, those sort of topics started to come up because why? It's all one and the same. You know, the selling you're doing now for whatever product, service, thought, idea, or concept you currently represent, you know, maybe some of you are working with a company right now that you absolutely love, yet in the back of your head, you've got this dream, this vision of this business, this idea you want to bring to market. The same skill sets are going to be required, right? The same ones to sell what it is you're selling now are going to be the same skill sets required to sell what you are planning to sell at some point in the future. And so... Many times when I meet with uh, budding entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs who are committed to becoming entrepreneurs but aren't quite there yet, I usually ask them, I say, well, why aren't we doing this now? And this is where I start to get a lot of this logic and reasoning. You want to know something? I think it's funny. The world and its systems, whether it's school, whether it's what parents call uh, the attempt at good parenting, Everybody is looking for this assurance, this security, this guarantee that never exists. I've said it many times in the past and I'll say it again. The only security you will ever have in life is in your faith and your ability to reach your goals, right? Security is a myth. It simply does not exist. So waiting for these perfect times to do things in life, all they're doing is causing you to age, gain more gray hairs, and ultimately cost you more uh, profit, revenue, because the longer you take to get started, the longer away you are from cashing those checks, putting that money into the bank. Um... And this is why I'm saying there is no perfect time. So I want to share a bit of a conversation that I was having when I was down there. Hmm. Ah, love my coffee. You see, this individual was explaining to me that he had a bunch of different ideas. You know, it was as though he had it all mapped out and he was just waiting for this perfect time. And this is where the laws that, you know, we teach, there's 150 of them inside the Entrepreneurial Collective Inner Circle. And again, when you understand these laws, this is not about listening to my opinion. Opinions are like elbows. Everybody's got one. Who's to say Alan Dickey's opinion is the one versus Tom, Dick, or Harry or whoever's? That's why I don't teach opinions. I teach laws and laws are infallible. And this is what I was explaining to this young man. I explained to him much like the law of gravity. If he wanted to test that by walking off the roof of the building, I would successfully predict what that was going to look like before he walked off the edge of the building. And I was willing to bet anyone and uh, everyone that I uh, would be accurate in my prediction. What goes up must come down. 
It's a law. It's an infallible one. Well, there's laws to being successful. Again, this is what we teach inside here. So like I have done many times before, I start to have these uncomfortable conversations. And you know, this gentleman, dynamite young guy, uh, and he's probably no different than many of you watching. He thought he had this perfect roadmap in his head. And all I continued to do was pepper him with questions, you know, pepper him with these laws of how to successfully bring about your journey as an entrepreneur, how to successfully sell your product, service, thoughts, ideas, and concepts right now. And, uh, it's frustrating. You know how many times I have these conversations with people and I watch their faces get all red? They're getting red because they're getting a little rattled and upset. You know why? Because a bunch of people who haven't accomplished what it is they're looking to accomplish agree with the nonsense that's coming out of their mouth. You know, I'm just waiting to get a certain amount of capital together, you know, and I'm just waiting to do this and I'm just waiting for this to happen and I'm just waiting for that to be built. And there's all these I'm just waiting for's that really are excuses to avoid the very difficult decisions and situations you must put yourself into in order to be successful. You know, one of the things we were talking about is uh, this gentleman said he had a great idea and a vision, and one of the things he needed to do was put put together enough capital, you know, to get things started. And I'm like, well, how long is that going to take? How much capital are we talking about? Why don't you go raise the capital? And then when I gave him the excuse about the money saying, hey, don't use your money, go and raise the money, there was an excuse to doing that. You know, I explained to him, if your idea was that bulletproof, then it would be easy to transfer this conviction to another human being to express how the value of what it is you had to offer far exceeded the price at which you were going to offer it to the market for. Therefore, success and profitability was uh, a, a guarantee. And then an investor would throw their money at you to get this party started. But you see, as I started to go and poke these various holes, this wasn't necessarily being done to say, hey, your idea sucks and you need to move on. No, this is how you refine your idea, strengthen it. This is how you develop the ability to find ways to get things done instead of excuses. Remember, the pursuit of perfection only creates paralysis. All of you out there who are waiting for this perfect moment to get things started, all you're doing is paralyzing yourself, causing so much valuable time to evaporate in front of your very eyes that could be used to move this goal along to its next step, to its uh, next destination and get that money closer to arriving inside your bank account in your pocket. Right, So remember, the pursuit of perfection only creates paralysis. Well, as I started to explain this to this young man and I was poking these holes, again, these holes are designed to strengthen the overall plan, you could see there was some frustration coming uh, into him. Many of you... Uh, you know, are watching this and probably have had these same ideas and you want to know something I can tell. There's a lot of you right now who are like, yeah, well, you know, that's not me. Like I'm different. And the reason my uh, whole vision is delayed is because of this, because of this and because of this. Listen, I'll give you one blanket statement. If you wanted to do it today, you'd find a way. And if not, you'll find an excuse. And to prove to yourself how great a closer you are, you've been closing yourself on these excuses for how long. I don't know. I'm going to suggest you stop. What this individual needed to hear was somebody who had all of the answers in the conviction to shut down the excuses that he had been making. You know, I uh, peppered him, if you will, for uh, a good 30 minutes. And at the end, he finally threw his hands up in the air. He said, I give. You see, I point this out because a lot of the answers on how you're going to move this future of yours forward today, well, they're right at your fingertips. Hashtag hint. But what needs to be understood is you need to abide by the laws, right? So when somebody says, if you want to do something, you'll find a way. If not, you'll find an excuse. You know what you're not allowed to do? Give an excuse as to why it's not getting done. And if you don't understand exactly how to get it done, well, you need to commit to the fact that you're the problem, you're the solution. And the only reason you haven't figured it out yet is because of you. Oh my God, I'm probably frustrating many of you watching this right now. My point is there is no such thing as the perfect time. You know, as we were having this conversation, he was getting frustrated. He looked at me and he said, well, you know, surely you didn't start your business until you had, you know, the, the money you set up and this and I said, no, this is not the case whatsoever. I started my business when my wife was three months pregnant with our first daughter. And you want to know why? Because I am the king of making excuses. I'm a closer. But do you want to know what you can't close? the mouth of a baby when it pops out and goes, wah, 
and needs to be fed, cared for, and provided for. I'm a man, ladies and gentlemen, and I hold that responsibility quite seriously. So it was almost uh, the understanding of the laws I teach. Pressure equals prosperity. I knew by starting my business at that time, the pressure was going to be so immense, it would force me to abide by the other laws that I've been dropping a few of here today. Um, Finding ways, not excuses, etc. Now take a look, folks. And I pointed this out to him. I've got my share of gray hairs, and that's why I keep the cut looking so fresh and short. You can't see them all. I don't give a shit. I love my grays. Pardon my French. They're badges of honor to me, and they should be to all of you. You see, behind these grays are a series of skill sets that allow me to laugh at the market. I don't. I, I, I yawn at the challenges the market uh, puts in front of me today. Why? Because I understand the laws on how to navigate them. It's too easy. This is why I love what it is I've learned, and that's why I feel this immense need to teach it to all of those looking to learn it. However, this uh, conversation, you know, the guy was saying to me, well, surely you had done this. And I explained to him, no, there was no perfect time. You know, when you throw yourself into these pressure filled situations, those are the exact moments where your skill set is going to be developed. That's when you're going to be at your sharpest. I remember saying to him, like, have you ever been in a fight before? right? You ever have a bully? Anybody ever come and say, I'm coming for you at three o'clock? Never mind three o'clock. If somebody ever run up on you and all of a sudden in an instant, you realize a fight's about to go down. Now what? Maybe didn't have all the answers. Well, that's when you become your sharpest man. And that's when you show your teeth. I don't care if Godzilla backs you into a corner, you're going to go out screaming and swinging and you may not wake up again or You may just figure out that you've got a fight inside of you that you didn't know existed until it was provoked properly. You see, this is what happens with a lot of entrepreneurs. This is why I act as the coach and the mentor I do. My job is to make you comfortable. If I are uncomfortable, I should say, if the way you've been comfortably going about bringing about this vision of yours was working, you wouldn't be where you're at, right? If you want to get what you haven't been getting, you got to start doing what you haven't been doing. And you want to know what I do? I force people to walk that plank. Not because I want to see them fall into the ocean and get eaten by sharks, because I know what's on the other side of that walk. And when you have trust and faith in the right mentor, I'm able to take you there. And then what a beautiful story it is. The victories we celebrate inside the Entrepreneurial Collective's inner circle are what are the greatest joy in my life next to my children and family, my gosh. Hearing guys crushing into seven-figure performance levels when I remember talking to them and they thought six figures was winning, right? It's about knowing what is on the other side of understanding all of these laws and having the uh, love for those inside the inner circle to really push their buttons to get them outside of those comfort zones so they can experience it for themselves. Well, this was the type of dialogue I was having with this particular young man. Mm. Now, why am I sharing this with you? Because I'm going to make the argument that on the other side of all of your current decisions is everything you ever wanted. Any of you who are not experiencing what you want and deserve to experience yet, it is because of these, these, these blankies that you keep sucking your thumb on. Comfort, folks. You see, when you understand again what the laws are, then it's all about becoming obedient and submissive to the laws. I make the parallels about the laws of the road, right? Laws exist for things to function smoothly. When you are obedient to the laws of the road and you stop at the red light, right? You are going to protect yourself from getting uh, blindsided by cars going the other way, right? When you're disobedient to the laws and you run red lights, you're exposing yourself to getting smacked and potentially killed. Well, when you're disobedient to the laws of how to successfully build and bring your business, your thought, idea, concept to the marketplace, you're going to get smacked by the market. You are going to fail. You are going to bleed out your lines of credit and that savings account that you thought was the very thing that was going to give you the security to go for it. Bullshit. You see, this is an example of what I'm talking about. I remember he was uh, mentioning that he wanted to save up enough money. And I'm like, there's no such thing as a perfect time, right? Um, I explained to him that I remember in building my business, there was a couple opportunities where people, fellow sales representatives in my industry, in the car business, 
who were ridiculously strong performers. I'm talking quarter million dollar a year earners, uh, ladies and gentlemen who who are were absolute rock stars. Well, I remember they wanted to, they saw what I was doing. They saw how I was a, a blessing to the market, how I was helping people. And it was great, right? Because I'm helping salespeople experience results they never thought of before. Their paychecks are going through the roof. So them and their families are on cloud nine. A byproduct of that production is the customers we're serving, the dealerships, they're profitable and they're winning. So everybody's happy. And the favorite check that they're cutting each month is the one to me and my company with my name on it. So you ever hear of win, win, win. That's the life I was living and continue to live to this day. Well, I had certain individuals who were saying, Al, I want to hook up with you. I love what it is you're doing. I'm going to work with you. And I was like, Hey man, there's an incredible opportunity to do that. Now here's the thing. There's no such thing as a perfect time. I remember having an instance where there was a particular guy, very successful guy, right? Yet for a younger dude, late twenties at the time, had a beautiful, you know, million dollar home, probably 65% of it paid off. You know, uh, he had the young family guy was killing it. He was doing very well. And then when he came and he wanted to work with me, he said he was going to, you know, do it uh, in the evenings, right? Like he was going to keep his current position and he was going to work doing what we do in the evening time. And I remember looking at him and I'm like, this is never going to work, man. Right. And he's like, no, it'll work. I, you know me, I'm a shooter. Da-da. I said, listen, pal, you can't be kind of pregnant. Heard that before. You can't be kind of pregnant. You're pregnant or you're not pregnant, right? You're committed to one outcome or you're not committed to an outcome. And you know what I knew is I knew because he had so much to lose, right? He had gone so far in this game called life and he had a family that was really committed uh, to that life. And understandably so, man, the guy was doing amazing even though what I had in store for him, that idea, that plan was uh, far greater. Uh, He wasn't willing to let go of what he had guaranteed to experience something that could be five times that. And that is a difficult thing. This is why you're gonna see a lot of the most successful entrepreneurs are the ones who did things at younger ages when they had nothing to lose or they had very little to lose and they were willing to put it all on black. They were willing to gamble it all, right? You see, when you have a lot to lose, it makes it very difficult to take these steps. And so in this particular instance, I remember this fizzled out after a few months, the result wasn't showing up there. And it's because the teeth, that hunger, that commitment that was necessary to make it all pop, to make it all work. It wasn't quite there because anytime he was working towards, you know, my deal, right? He wasn't, he wasn't all in. If he was having a tough conversation, he, he didn't have that hunger, that necessity to push the conversation through to a close because he had something to fall back on. I want you to remember, folks, the law states necessity is the mother of all invention. Yeah. When you have to get something done, that is then and only then will you realize exactly what you uh, are committed to do, what you are willing to do to make it happen. Again, necessity is the mother of all invention. So in that particular instance, that individual was robbing himself of experiencing that law being a blessing to him because he was comfortable. I'm going to give you another one. I had another uh, instance where another strong performer in our industry, you know, one, uh, well, in my automotive industry, wanted to join my company. This was another quarter, two fifty, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 a year earner, was an absolute rock star. And I remember when they came to work with me, uh, you know, he was like, I'm in a good place, man. I got like 75 grand in the bank. So it's all good, man. We, and I, I remember once he said that I was like, Oh, this is no good. He's like, what? I'm like, go buy a property with that money, empty your bank account. He's like, no way, man. I'm like, what do you mean? I got that as a fallback. I'm like, anybody who has a plan B is not committed to plan a fallbacks. This is the stuff that your, uh, broke teachers in these systems are teaching you. If it was working, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. It's so important. You vet the source, right? When somebody's going to give you some type of wisdom, some type of advice, you got to really ask yourself, where's this advice coming from? And what is this person giving the advice done or accomplished to warrant me listening to it? I remember with that instance, that particular individual, it was like a couple of months. That bank account got sawed in half, if not more. Guy had an expensive lifestyle. 
And it was because of the comfort of the bank account and leaning against it, he wasn't able to push through. Now, on the other side of that coin, I have yours truly, right? What do you mean? We're three months pregnant with a baby on the way, right? Uh, I've had myself, I've had other people who have worked with me who were hungry. They were in situations where, where they were like, all of this makes sense. Uh, I'm broke and I'm willing to create my life off of this. And those are the ones who experienced the result and have been to join me uh, in helping so many dealers across the globe, right? Um, and so this is, you know, where I say there's no such thing as a perfect time, but you need to understand laws that can be working for you. Comfort's next to apathy and apathy next to death. There is no perfect time. There's no perfect time to start your business. There's no perfect time to make that move. The time is now. If the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, when's the next best time? It's right now. So, I mean, I scream this from the rooftops. And inside the inner circle, I'm able to slow it down because there's a huge teaching behind it where I express these 150 laws. And I'm telling you, you can't have a conversation with me and wiggle out of them. And that's the beauty of it. They're so flawless. And they're not mine. They're not my opinions anyways. They're infallible laws, success principles. And there's not one entrepreneur, successful entrepreneur, Jeff Bezos down on the planet who would disagree with any of them. Because everyone who has gotten to where they've gotten to as a successful entrepreneur has abided by them and been obedient to them. Again, it's only your ignorance or a human being's ignorance towards these laws of success that cause them to stumble. Conversely, it's only a human being's ignorance, again, by definition, that's a lack of knowledge, to the laws of the road that'll cause them to get a ticket or in a car accident. So I had this conversation with this young man, and the great part is, you know, uh, uh, I punched through. I explained to him my job wasn't to... Uh, poke holes in his game plan as a negative. It was rather to strengthen it. And this is what you always want to do. You want to refine what it is you're planning on doing. And your refinement can come from a trusted mentor. It can also come by from the market. The market can deliver that refinement in a much more blunt fashion via no sales and no pitches and not giving you the time of day. But one way or another, you'll find out. And your willingness to keep getting back up and keep committing until you figure out a way is ultimately what's going to deliver it all to you. I want to kind of wrap things up on this. When I say there's no perfect time, some of you may have children, some of you may not. But to any of you that have children, like, and to those of you that don't, it's the same, same uh, uh, information to, to get from what I'm about to say. There is no perfect time. I love when people are planning to have kids and all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, God's in front of me. They're like, what? Well, they talk like we're going to have, you know what? We're going to get pregnant in October. Okay. Cause we did the math, right? You know, it's, it's uh, October, November, December, January, February, May, uh, or April, uh, February, March, April, May, June. And like, we're going to have a summer baby. You know what I'm saying? Like they have counted backwards the nine months and they're determining what month they're going to get pregnant at. I love this. I'm like, oh my God, God has come down to say hi to me in the form of you two, a couple talking this way. It's so crazy, right? None of you are God. And many of you have had children where it was like this, honey, I'm pregnant. Pfft, what? Yeah. Meaning it wasn't planned. Now, to those of you that did plan your kids and all that, hey, you know what? I, I get it. I did that. I get it. it. It exists. It's out there, okay? But a lot of people, that's not how it shook out. Yeah, go ask your parents if you were planned. There's a fun topic or conversation. They love you. Build a bridge and get over it. But ask them, hey, was I planned? A lot of times you're going to hear, no, you weren't planned. And you want to know what you did? When the baby showed up, you figured it out. Or at least I hope so for most of you. My point is, is there is no perfect time. When the baby shows up, necessity becomes the mother of all invention. You figure out how to make the money to pay the bills and get the diapers. That kid never goes without. The meals are in the fridge, the kid gets fed, and everybody's got a story about how they just put it together a day before the rent was due. 
But what happens is those uncomfortable moments develop a skill set in you. And as that skill set develops, you're able to refine that skill set. And then you start to get really good at it. And you want to know what that looks like? It looks like the majority of people who are 35, 45, 55 years old who learned these lessons when they got pregnant or had kids at 20 and now are extremely well off with homes paid for and lots of dough in the bank. Not everybody, but the smart ones. Be a smart one. There's no such thing as a perfect time, not only with having kids, but with also your business. Now, look, when you're having kids, I'm old school, okay? Find the right person, get married, right? You can plan as much of it as you, you know, can or want to or, or, or uh, hope to, right? Hey, let's get married first. Let's make sure we've got, you know, a roof over our head. Uh, maybe we could save up a little bit of money as a nest egg. Yeah, we could do that. Like you like do that. That is smart. I'm just saying that's not always how it works out. And when it comes to being an entrepreneur, you can say, okay, we're going to start this new business. We're ready to live skinny. We've, we've, we got our bills narrowed down. We need, you know, 25, 35, 4,500 a month just to, to fight another month. We're going to start looking at life on a month by month basis. No vacations. We're going to laugh about this on a beach in Hawaii five years from now when everything pops. But right now we're going to live thin like you can plan to a degree. But at the end of the day, right, planning for this perfect utopian outcome where there's a million dollars in the bank and the market is knocking down your door and everybody is like, we're waiting for what you got to sell us. This is not happening, folks. It's not happening. Gosh. You know how exhausting it is to talk about this? Many of you right now are listening to this and you're like, yeah, man, this is great. This is a value. I needed to hear this today. And you know what? That's why I'm making the episode. Do you want to know what I'm thinking over here? I want to run my head against a wall because I am so tired of having this exact same conversation. And I'm tired because I have to have this conversation. Perhaps that's why I'm having it now so it can be filmed and I won't have to have it again. I'm just going to start pointing to this episode. There is no perfect opportunity. What you need to do is find out who's doing what it is you're looking to do. Who started that business? Who started that business, did it with nothing, knew the laws of how to guarantee its success, applied those laws, remained obedient to those laws, and now has a thriving business producing the numbers you're looking to produce. That's exactly what I've done. That's exactly what this is, the Entrepreneurial Collective's inner circle. However, you need to understand that if you knew what you were doing, the result would already be there. You see, that was the message for this young man here. I explained to him, if all of this thought, if all of what you're currently thinking was it, then why are we talking? There were so many holes in where that person was at in life at this very moment based on what they were telling me that it didn't add up. And when I started peppering all of this logic and reasoning, it became very frustrating. You know why? Because it was true. That's right. It was the truth. And you can't argue against it. Who wants to argue with me? What goes up must come down. Give your head a shake. So, folks, I love you. I love all of you and I want to see all of you win because again, what it is you have to bring to the world and to the market, I selfishly want it as a consumer, as a member of the market. And I've been waiting for you to get off your tail and drop it like it's hot on us. There is no perfect time, folks. There's no perfect time to have a kid. You're not God and can't determine that, by the way. And there's no perfect time to start your business. And I'm going to argue right? That when you move forward in imperfection, knowing that perfection is unattainable and never shows up, well, that's step one. And then understand there's no such thing as losses. You don't lose in this journey, folks. The L's are learning opportunities. And through those learning opportunities, you will refine your gift. You will refine your approach. You will refine your pitch. You will refine your ability to close in these selling conversations and ultimately, you will turn into an absolute savage, a powerhouse who is serving the world through their business, making it look easy and making a ton of money, not only for yourself, for your family, but for your team and those that are supporting the same dreams and goals of what it is you want to do and bring to those on planet Earth. 
There's no such thing as a perfect time, folks. That's our time for this week. Listen, don't forget to like and subscribe. Get inside the Entrepreneurial Collective. A day missed is a day lost, and a day captured is a day gained. And I'm telling you right now, there's many of you that are sitting on your thumbs waiting for a tomorrow that never comes. And if, if you were inside of this collective with the rest of us, you would see really quickly just how easy it is to win, especially when you have a supporting community surrounded around you who aren't going to feed life into the bullshit excuses you keep creating for yourself and uh, causing yourself to delay what it is you have to offer to this world by serving it through your business. Again, I'm Alan Dickey. This is the Entrepreneurial Collective Podcast. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll look forward to seeing you on our next episode. Make it a great day, everybody.